Hi, my name's Ray with Water Heaters Now, and today I'm gonna teach you how to walk through your annual inspection on a fairly new piece of equipment that just came out and hit the market about three, four months ago here in Minnesota. It's a Renai I-120, and what it is, it's a combination water heater and boiler. It'll send 240,000 BTUs to the hot water side, which will give you about five gallons a minute, the equivalent of three showers running at the same time, and within the same box, you can heat up the in-floor heat of this 2,000 square foot home. So anytime that you have need for hot water for showering or cleaning, it's gonna give that priority over the in-floor heat so that you, always, you never experience a lack of hot water because it's doing heating. But it has plenty of horsepower to do both. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is check to see if there's any error code history in the heater itself. So we're gonna push the hot water power button, then we're gonna push the down arrow button, and it'll show us if there's been any codes. But it's just showing that there's 22 PSI in the heat side. If there were any error code history, it would have said E and then the code. And it would have walked through the different codes that had uh, happened over the heater since the time of installation. In this case, it's only been installed a couple of months and it's running perfectly, there have been no error codes, but that's the first thing that we're gonna check is if there's any history of error codes um, that maybe the customer didn't even know of so that we could address those properly. Since there's no error codes, we're gonna go to the next step, which is to remove the front panel of the water heater. It has a couple of aesthetic strips that you just pull this one straight to the left and you pull this one straight to the right. If you tried to muscle it and pull it straight out, you'd break the tabs off and it wouldn't be able to go back on. So there's these clips that go inside these notches. So you just wanna be careful as you take it off. All right, now that we have the side strips removed, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the panel, two on each side, and then remove the panel by tilting the bottom forward, lifting it off, and then we can visualize the burner to make sure that the flame rod is operating properly. Now once we have the front panel off, what we're looking to see is they give you a sight glass here, which we're gonna give you a close up in a minute. But you will notice some tubes inside and the tubes are diffusing fire. What you wanna see is a very clean blue flame coming out of the flame rod into the heat exchanger area where water is heated as it passes through. So we'll give you a close up. So what you're looking for in this sight glass is a very clean blue flame. Now the whole heat exchanger area is gonna glow like a red orange and that's exactly what you want. But you also wanna see blue flame kind of radiating underneath the heat exchanger. That tells you that the gas pressure is proper and it's firing exactly the way it should be. So what this is, is this is the equivalent of a turbo on a vehicle. This is pulling fresh air in, the air is coming, from your fresh air intake it's coming through this pan and the fresh air comes down here into the turbo where the gas mixes and the air and gas mix into the combustion so because we're pulling in air it's possible that you could have insects or different things in there so there's a little screen to be removed and there's just a couple of specks of things that could be removed very little but it's Always a good idea to check your fresh air intake filter every year to make sure in case some spiders decided to nest in there. And you could actually not have the proper air gas mixture, which would cause your equipment to not operate properly. And then when you're done, you can just slide it right back in. And that's how you uh, clean your air filter on the unit. So now looking under the heater, what we have is a boiler inlet and outlet and a domestic hot water inlet and outlet. This is just the cold water from your house 
going into the heater and the hot water coming out. So the inside two lines are your waters and this pipe in front is the gas. So for right now, we're gonna focus on these two waters and we're gonna come down to a double valve assembly. Now this valve assembly, when we shut this off and shut this off, and your combination boiler will have these same valves on it. What we've done is we've isolated the heater. No water can come into the heater, no water can come out. What we wanna do is change the cold water inlet filter, not change it, but clean it rather. So now we have water inside the tankless unit, maybe a couple of quarts, and we wanna drain that out so that when we clean the filter, we don't have water gush out of that port. So this is called a service valve. Now, if we're gonna clean the heater, we're gonna pump white vinegar into that valve through the heater and out of this valve, keeping these closed. This heater's only been installed for a few months, so it's not necessary. Actually, the manufacturer, Renai, says you should not need to do any type of cleaning on the heat exchanger on this tankless unit, which is a new innovation for tankless, because in the past, we always say you have to clean these things every year if you're gonna have tankless. But what they've done is they've created the heat exchanger so that the water flows in such a way up there that it cleans itself as it passes through. So what they're telling us is that this doesn't need the regular cleaning. With that said, it'll give you an error code if it needs to be cleaned. So what we're gonna do now is just remove this cap and then we're gonna dump the water out that's in the heater. And it'll drain about a quart to two quarts, so we'll give it time to do that. So if you follow the cold inlet, this pipe is delivering cold water into the heater under normal conditions, and right before it goes into the unit, there's a filter that filters the cold water. It's called the cold water filter. So we'll go ahead and take that out, and we'll see if there's any dirt or debris or residue in it. And if so, you just take a toothbrush and clean it out. So you can see there's a couple of specks of dirt inside. And usually tap it out in your hand. And then we'll go rinse it out in some cold water and insert the filter back in. Now, as you can see, any debris that was in the filter is very clean on the inside. All the specks are gone and it's ready to put back into the heater and do its job. There's an O-ring right there. And as you go in, you should feel that O-ring seat It'll give a little bit of resistance, but again, finger tight is adequate in this application. Okay, now we're ready to reinsert the cold water filter at the base of the heater, tighten it up. And when you get it finger tight and you feel like that's enough, just grab it with both fingers, give it a little bit of a turn and that will be adequate. So now we're gonna turn the service valve to the off position. We'll put the cap back on and there's a rubber gasket inside, so if that ever did leak, it would prevent it from leaking on your floor. At this point, we're ready to turn the cold back onto the unit. And then the outlet of the water heater, which would be your hot water valve, we're ready to turn that back on to turn hot water back to your house. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the process to clean both the boiler side and the potable side in your heater, should it ever give you an error code that it needs to be cleaned. So we're gonna take two gallons of white vinegar and put it in a bucket. Recycle so you save the fishies. Other one in there. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is take just a standard low power submersible pump like this with a garden hose attachment out the top. And we're going to install the garden hose or in this case, a washer machine hose onto that before we put it into the vinegar solution. That way we don't have to put our hands in the vinegar.
after that's done, we can just take and lower this into the vinegar solution, like so. So now our sump pump is connected to this pipe, which we will connect to the cold water inlet. We're going to do the domestic side first. This is the cold water coming into your water heater, coming out the hot side. So we're going to connect that hose there. Then we're going to take another clothes washer hose. And we're going to connect it to the service port on the hot side of your water heater. Fortunately, they coat them blue and red so that you know exactly which one is going in and which one's coming out. Now what we would do is take that same hose and put it in the bucket. So now we have a sump pump in two gallons of white vinegar in a bucket attached to a hose going into the blue valve. Out of the red valve, the hose comes back this way. Next, what we're going to do is turn both valves off to isolate the heater. So the liquid will go in through here, it'll go in through the heat exchanger, and it'll come back down through the hot, and it'll have to come out this hose because it can't go into your house hot water system. So now I would open the blue and the red valves, I would plug in the sump pump, and it would cycle through, and I would allow it to do so for about a half hour. At that time, I would shut the blue valve off, I would disconnect the cold side, and then I would run cold water and purge the vinegar out of my unit out this valve for about 10 minutes to eliminate any vinegar odor inside your heater and inside your water heating system. So one more time to begin, because we're not going to do this process now because it's not necessary, um, I would open both valves, close both the isolation valves, open both service valves, and open as always where it goes parallel with the pipe. Then I'd plug the sump pump in and the vinegar would go through the unit, come back out the hot side and dump back into the bucket and just let it cycle through for a half hour, 40 minutes. When you're done, you're going to close this blue valve. The, you're no longer gonna, you unplug your sump pump. You're no longer gonna be introducing vinegar into the system. And then you open the cold water valve. Now you're pushing fresh cold water through your system and it's still coming out this hose into your bucket or a floor drain or wherever you're going to dispose of the water. And let it do that process for about 5-10 minutes so you eliminate any um, vinegar odors inside your heater. You don't have that smell coming through your faucets. So at that point you have descaled the heat exchanger um, that's the process we've always done on tankless water heaters. Renai is telling us that won't be necessary, and if there ever is scaling in the heat exchanger, it'll show you an error code of NC, I believe it is. Um, so that's how you descale the heat exchanger on the domestic side. Now I'm going to show you how to do it on the boiler side, and then we'll you'll understand how to descale your water heater very simply with a sump pump, bucket, two gallons of white vinegar, and a pair of clothes washer hoses. So now that we have cleaned through the domestic side, if we would have purged through all the vinegar and then got the water out, we will take the cap off the boiler inlet. The right side is the return water going into the boiler. The left side is the supply water going out the boiler system to heat the space in this case, in-floor heat. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to... Oh, there's a gasket that got caught that's from the cap. You always have to be careful of that. I'm glad that happened. The gaskets are always in these caps on the domestic side and the boiler side. And if they fall out, you want to make sure to get them back in. They make a seal on the threads. So this is the hose that's connected to the pump inside the bucket filled with vinegar. That's going to go on the inlet side of the boiler. And then we'll take our secondary hose. This hose is just gravity into the bucket, nothing else attached to it. Gaskets in the cap. And we're going to connect this to what we would call the supply side of the boiler. The supply side is when it comes out of the boiler at 120 to 180 degrees, whatever temp you want it at. In floor heat, you set it 110 to 120 degrees. 
So we put this hose into the white vinegar bucket. So now you have the sump pump in the vinegar feeding the return so it's going into the boiler. It'll cycle through and come out that service port valve. So now I would shut off the boiler from all the space heating. So all the loops in the in floor and all the other piping is isolated away. And now we're only working on the boiler itself. Because if you're cleaning the heat exchanger, you don't want to drain the whole boiler system. You just want to isolate it. So these are your isolation valves. Next, you would open both the service port valves and then plug the white vinegar pump in and it'll cycle the vinegar through back into the bucket and you would let them do that for about 40 minutes. At the end of that time, you would shut off your service port valves, disconnect your hoses, and then fill your boiler system at this juncture right here. Um, every boiler system will be a little different, but you'll have a valve that you can reintroduce water into your boiler. In this case, we would open this valve, it'll push water through the boiler and out the outlet hose, the same way we did the domestic side. So sometimes that can be a little bit confusing, but you have our phone number right on your water heater. So if you wanted to call, take a picture of it, it would be very easy for us to walk you through. If you absolutely want somebody else to come do the cleaning, we'll be happy to come help you. We're not gonna leave you out in the cold that way. Um, so I want you to know you're taken care of, but a big part of our business is wanting to help you get the most life you can out of your heater without paying service fees to have somebody come out and do the cleaning. You spend a lot of money on a tankless unit. There are things to do to maintain it. We wanna help you get the life you can out of it without having to spend any extra dough. So that's what I would want if I was in your shoes. So that's what we offer as a company. Um, so at the end of that process, uh, the water would purge the vinegar through and you'd have solid water in there. And then you would open your service valves back up again, turn your boiler back on, you're back in business. All right, to finish the process, we're just gonna put the cover back on and we'll install the four screws. And then again, put the slides in from the side on both sides and we'll plug the unit in and they'll be fired and ready to go. So give a call if you got any questions.